Welcome back. This lecture is going to uh, cover one of the two estimators that I promised for this chapter. So remember I said that we were going to do the method of moments estimator and maximum likelihood. Well, we're going to do method of moments right now. So l let me um, remind you of the problem we're trying to solve. So for example, let's say that I've got some random variable x that I can assume is from some exponential distribution, but I don't know the value of the parameter. So I've, I've observed actually 15 observations from this distribution, and here they are. And how do I find this lambda? Well, let's go find it with method of moments. So um, what is method of moments all about? Well, before I can really you know, tell you, we, uh, we need some definitions. So the first one is, if I have some random variable x with a given distribution, say an exponential, um, the definition of the kth moment of the distribution is just the expected value of x to, to the k power. So if I took k equal to 1, what is the expected value of x? That's just my first, uh, you know, that's just my mean, or the first moment. So the mean is the first moment. Uh, what about the, um, the second uh, moment? Well, that would be e at x squared, which is just the variance plus the mean squared. So let's go over to my, my, um, my, my packet for a second here, my, not my packet, my paper. And just remember that the variance of x, this was a result that I gave you from um, probability theory, is just the expected value of x squared. So this is your second moment. Uh, which I've been calling mu2 in the course packet, less the mean squared. So then I can solve this by moving the um, mu over to this other side, and we end up with the second moment is just the variance plus the mean. All right, so um, back to the course packet. Let's say now that I have a random sample of size n from this distribution. So with the sample of size n, I can compute sample moments. So the first sample moment, which we're going to call mu hat 1, is just going to be 1 over n times the sum of xi raised to the 1. Well, that's just the sample mean. And we could uh, likewise find the second sample moment and third sample moment if need be. So Let's get to the method of moments, uh, method of moments estimator. So uh, I'll just first mention that this is one of the oldest methods of estimation out there. It's originally due to a very famous statistician by the name of Carl Pearson. You should know um, you should know the name of Carl Pearson. Pearson is um, uh, famous for for many statistics like the um, the Pearson correlation coefficient, which we covered. Uh, what was it, last week or so, two weeks ago. Another method that's due to him that you should have uh, heard of is the Pearson chi-square statistic, which uh, we haven't covered yet, but maybe you've covered that in another class. Anyway, back in the 1890s, uh, you know, Carl Pearson came up with this method. So here's the, here's the whole idea. Go find the moments of the distribution using probability theory and simply equate those. So now notice, the moments of the distribution will be functions of the parameter, okay, or parameters. Then equate the moments of the distribution with the sample moments and solve. That's all there is to it. So it's a very simple method. Well, let's go uh, apply this to the exponential distribution that we've been talking about. So uh, back in, I, don't know, I guess it was week two, I, I challenged you in a your turn exercise to find the mean of an exponential, which required integration by parts. So I, I hope you did that. Or you could just simply go to the Wikipedia page and get the mean. So you could use you know integration by parts, or you could just go to the Wikipedia page and see that the mean is 1 over lambda. So 1 over lambda is the first moment of the distribution, 
and I'm going to equate that with the first sample moment. So 1 over lambda has to equal x bar. We can solve that for lambda. And so our estimator of lambda is simply 1 over x bar. So let's go back to the problem I discussed at the beginning of, of the uh, lecture. You know, so so uh, I've typed in that data. So we, we, I've moused it in. Now if I type 1 over the mean of x, so the mean of x is that first sample moment, so 1 over that gives me my estimate of lambda hat. So uh, maybe I will just make this really clear, our estimate of lambda is that point zero three three, and that's all there is to the method of moments estimator. I will now take you through a couple more examples. Another very simple example is a Poisson example. So if we, um, if you can find the mean of a Poisson distribution with, um, you know, using um, properties of, of infinite series, or you can go to the Wikipedia page. We probably had to do the Poisson distribution back in, um, back in your probability class, but it turns out the mean of a Poisson is just the parameter lambda. Okay, so let's go back and do what, what I said to do. So we just found the moment of the distribution. So the moment of the distribution is lambda, and the method of moments estimator is simply equate that with the sample moment. The first sample moment is x bar, and so I have to solve this for lambda. Well, I guess it's already solved. So lambda hat is just x bar. So if I had a Poisson, if I had data from a Poisson distribution and I wanted to estimate the, um, the, the parameter, I would simply average the x's. Now, uh, there are more complicated examples. These two, I think, are, are quite, uh, quite easy um, examples. You should uh, read DeVore. Uh, DeVore works it out for a gamma distribution. So gamma is a slightly more complicated version of the exponential. One way to think about it. Um, I thought I would do the normal distribution for us uh, during this video, since that's not in the textbook, and it gives us a, a, a more complicated case that involves two parameters. So what are the um, uh, parameters of a normal distribution? Let's go look at normal distribution right here. And so the parameters of a normal distribution are mu and sigma. And so mu is the mean and sigma is the variance. So we are going to go, um, I, I, actually, I'll just mention one thing. Uh, you may not have done moment generating functions in your probability class, or maybe they got covered. If you did do moment generating functions, this is, um, this is one of the situations where the, these things are very handy. But if you didn't do them, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We're going um, you know, to find a way of, of getting the second moment without using the moment generating function. But I just thought I would mention that um, uh, th this is where these moment generating functions are really handy. The first time I took probability theory, I didn't... Um, really see a good application of them, well, this is, this is a really good application of them. All right, so what we know is that with a normal distribution, with a normal distribution, we have a PDF, which is um, some function of x with parameters mu, and I'm going to call it sigma squared. So this is 1 over the square root of 2 pi sigma squared. And then we have a, um, uh, an e to one half, negative one half, x minus the mean squared divided by sigma squared. All of that goes into the exponent. And so what we know is that the first moment, so the first moment of this is e at x is equal to mu. And what we, um, 
we, we also know is that the, the variance sigma squared is equal to e at x squared, so there's our second moment, minus uh, the first moment squared. So I'm going to go solve this for um, my second moment of the distribution. So e at x squared is equal to sigma squared plus mu squared. All right, so that's basically what I wrote up there, but I guess it doesn't hurt to repeat it. Um, let's go find our, um, you know, our estimator of mu. So remember the rule. Take your moment of the distribution. Well, this is the first moment of the distribution and set it equal to the, the sample moment. So this is, uh, what is the sample moment? Uh, 1 over n times the sum of xi, where i equals 1 to n, otherwise known as x bar. So this is our s. Now we got to go solve this for mu. So if I'm going to be consistent with how I wrote this in the course packet, I could say, well, a mu hat is then x bar, and there is our estimator of the first, um, you know, the, the first parameter mu. All right. Now we need to go find the um, the estimator of sigma squared. So I have um, the second moment expressed as a function of the two parameters of the distribution. And so the rule is equate the second moment with the second sample moment. Um, before I do that, I want to do a little bit of algebra with you and just establish a result that we're going to need in a second. Okay, so um, I'm going to take the sum uh, xi minus x bar squared. So we called this the total sums of squares. Um, I guess it was earlier this week. And let's go expand the sum of squares. So this is equal to, I'm going to square the first term. So this is the sum xi squared. That's going to be, that's going to get me to my second, uh, my, my second um, sample moment in a second. Now I have to take 2 times the first term times the second term. So the second term has a minus sign, so I'm going to put a minus 2. X bar does not involve any subscript, so I can pull that out of the sum. So it's 2 X bar. I'm going to give myself a little bit of space here because I want to, uh, I'm going to put a constant in here, in here in a second. So times the sum of xi. Okay, now what's this last term? Well, the last term is x bar squared, and I'm going to sum that from i equals 1 to n, which means I end up with n copies of x bar squared. All right, now what I'd like to do is multiply uh, this thing by 1. I can multiply it by 1 and not change it. So if I, I but I'm going to write my 1 in a very special way. Uh, I'm going to write my 1 as n over n. Now the reason I'm doing this is if you look at this whole thing right here, this is x bar. All right? So then what I have here is 2 times x bar times n times x bar. So this is really, this whole thing right here is minus 2n x bar, and I have a plus n x bar squared over it. Oh, don't forget the squared there. All right, so I get two copies of x bar, so it gets squared. So where I'm trying to go with this is this is equal to the sum of xi squared, so that's just that first term, and then I'm going to subtract off n x bar squared, because I had two copies of n x bar squared, minus two copies, and then I have plus one. Um, that's actually going to be plus. No, I was right the first time. That's going to be minus. All right, so this is just uh, the sum of x i squared minus n x bar squared. All right. Well, now let's go. Um, let, let's go. Uh, you know, do do my method of moments estimator. So we're going to take 
the second moment, so maybe, why don't we just write the whole thing out, e at x squared is equal to, you know, as a function of my parameters, mu squared, uh, sigma squared plus mu squared. All right, and this has to be equal to the sum uh, i equals 1 to n xi squared, which is my second sample moment. So maybe I should just label that second sample moment. All right, I've already found my estimator of mu. So is I'm solving a system of two equations and two unknowns, except the first equation didn't have sigma squared in it. So I'm going to go substitute um, my estimator for mu in place of mu. So you, what we have here is sigma squared plus x bar squared, substituting my estimator of it. Uh, oops, don't forget the 1 over n there. All right, so this is equal to 1 over n sum xi squared. So I need to go solve this now for sigma hat. So sigma hat squared is 1 over n sum xi squared. And I'm going to drop in... Well, we don't need to drop that in. I'm going to move this over to the other side, minus x bar squared. Now, I'd love to be able to express this a little more simply, and I'm going to go draw on this result that we just derived up here. All right, so how could I put this in the form of this? And the answer is, I'm going to multiply this by 1. So my, I'm going to write my 1 as n over n. So that's a completely legal thing to do. So what are we left with? This is equal to, well, let's see, this n crosses out with this n. So, so I'm going to put all of this over n. That's, that's that n right there. This n crosses out with that n, and we're just left with the sum of xi squared. And then what do I have here? I have n x bar squared. And so notice, I'm, I'm just going to draw a big arrow here. This is equal to this. All right. So this is equal to, uh, well, let's go, go drop that, that other expression in. x i minus x bar squared all divided by n. So this, um, this should look slightly familiar to you. This is, uh, this is what I called sigma hat squared during my previous lecture this week. And what I want you to note is that this is not the same thing as s squared. What's s squared? So s squared is equal to 1 over n minus 1 sum xi minus x bar squared. All right, so uh, th this is kind of the simple, obvious estimator of the variance where you divide by n. So I, I, I always call this the average squared deviation from the mean, whereas s squared isn't really the average. It's almost the average, but because we're dividing by n minus 1, it's not exactly the average. So the point that I'm making here is that the method of moments estimator is actually biased. So note, mom estimator of sigma squared is biased based on the result that I proved uh, during the uh, earlier lecture this week. So method of moments estimators don't have to be um, uh, unbiased. They're, 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 they're often completely reasonable estimators. This is a reasonable estimator. It just lacks this nice property of being um, unbiased. All right, that's about it for um, that's about it for our method of moments estimator. In the next video, we're going to do maximum likelihood.